Hey everybody. So lately I have been um, gun nerding out on ballistics and I kind of want to go over a few ballistic principles with you guys and kind of break them down a little bit. So one of the ones that confused me was spin drift. I knew it happened. Uh, kind of took a little bit of diving in to kind of find the engineering and scientific reason behind why it happens. So let's kind of get in and break that down. Uh, I'm going to use kind of Burger 105 6mm bullet. Let's kind of go through and illustrate it and show you guys kind of what causes spin drift and some of the effects that influence it. So a few things, um, just kind of to quickly note, uh, the main factors um, to required spin to stabilize a bullet is going to be a factor of bullet length, which corresponds to weight. Because the diameter of a bullet is going to be fixed based on the caliber, the only way to increase weight is by essentially increasing the length of the projectile. So now we'll kind of see how that comes into play here in a minute, but the length of the projectile is what is going to affect essentially the required uh, twist rate to stabilize the bullet. So looking at the bullet coming out of a bore traveling this direction, when you're shooting down range, you actually have to um, incline the barrel to account for drop at distance. So your bullet's gonna fly an arc that way. So when it leaves the bore, it's actually gonna be pointed at an upward angle. We'll kind of exaggerate it here um, for effect, but it's gonna be coming out of the bore in a trajectory this direction with air resistance and air pressure is gonna be pushing back on it this way. So now two of the key things to consider with a bullet is going to be center of pressure and center of gravity. So the center of gravity or the center of mass is essentially the concentration point um, where you can take all the mass of the projectile, probably somewhere in here, the section with the most mass. Uh, the center of pressure is where you kind of define all of the air pressure and air resistance acting on the bullet. So when it's traveling into the path of the airflow, the center of pressure is going to be somewhere up here. So the longer the bullet, the further forward the center of pressure. But now what that relates to is when the bullet is traveling in its arc, the center of pressure essentially is a force acting on the bullet from all the air pressure. So you've got your center of gravity here and you've got the uh, center of pressure up here. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna push the bullet and wanna cause it to spin and tumble over itself that way. So if you've seen an understabilized bullet, that's what they end up doing is they tumble and there's no stability because that's what it's doing. The air pressure is causing that bullet to tumble over itself. Okay, now because the air pressure wants to make the bullet tumble over itself, what we have to do is impart a spin on the bullet. Same principle as the top, you're introducing gyroscopic stabilization. The spinning helps keep that bullet stable. So what that does is by spinning the bullet, you introduce what's known as angular momentum. So one thing to know for going forward is engineering uses what's known as the right hand rule. So essentially if you have a torque, so you have your axis here, um, you curl your fingers in the direction of the force and the torque. So if you're turning a screw, you're turning it this way. Your thumb is pointing in the direction of the torque. And that's kind of how that is defined. So when a bullet is spinning, if you've got a right hand twist, you've got that bullet spinning this direction. So using the right hand rule, we'll curl the, curl the thumb and the uh, essentially the angular momentum vector is gonna be pointing straight this way out the nose of the bullet. So what that results in is we've got the bullet spinning, but we still have the air pressure acting on the front of the bullet. So it still wants to push the bullet up and make it nose over, but because it's spinning, it doesn't wanna move and it wants to stay into position. So what that ends up in is you have a torque from the air pressure around the center of gravity wanting to push that bullet up. So what that gives us is a torque pushing that direction, meaning we are gonna get a force vector pushing straight up this way, which would be to the right of the bullet. So let's kind of go and give it a top view. So the bullet is spinning to the right, so it's pointing that direction. The torque is going to want to push the bullet up, so it's gonna to wanna to curl it up, so you're gonna get a force vector going out that way, essentially a torque vector. So because of that, it's spinning, it wants to stay in the orientation, you are gonna get a resultant force that direction, and that force is gonna push the bullet to the right for a right-handed twist. So um, exact opposite for left-handed twist barrel, so you're gonna curl, your twist is going this way, so your <clears throat> angular momentum vector is gonna be pointed backwards, but your bullet's still gonna want to come and curl up with a torque going out to the side. So you're gonna go back with a torque to the side, it means your bullet's gonna wanna pitch this way, and it's gonna wanna follow the direction of the nose, so it's gonna pitch this direction, 
and it's going to follow off to the left. So that's essentially what causes spin drift, just a very quick breakdown. There are a few factors that determine how much the rate of spin, the weight, and a few things like that. But as far as just a quick breakdown, um, that is really what causes spin drift with gyroscopic stabilization. It's due to the bullet leaving the barrel at an angle and the air pressure essentially wanting to force the bullet to tumble. The spin stabilizes it, make it resist tumbling, but that resistance to tumbling makes it move off in a different direction.